Hey, this is Jesse for bit to brain Today I want to talk about optimizing and or repairing your Mac. So I'm going to go over a few steps that you can do on your system to make sure it is optimized, to make sure you won't have to repair anything, to make sure you won't have to spend the money on these new components, and if you do, what you should look for. So in order to start this, I want to go through a few of the main components that you'll be looking at in regards to the CPU, the disk drive, and your RAM. So the CPU. So everyone's heard of the CPU. What does the CPU do? Basically, it carries out the instructions of programs on your system. It does arithmetic. It does the input-output operations specified by instructions on your system. It's basically the brain of your computer. It's where the calculations take place. And know that the more powerful the CPU, the more complex instructions you can do. Now, what is a disk drive? A disk drive is basically where the data storage takes place in your system. Um, we're talking... Disk drives, we're usually talking latency, data transfer rates, seek times, things like that. So the lower the latency, the better the drive will be by and large. Well, and that's what you want. You want low latency. So traditionally, we've had HDD offerings in our systems. Uh, 5400 RPM, 7200 RPM. These HDD components are basically magnetic parts. So there's moving parts involved in that. Now we're moving towards the SSD, which I'm sure you've all heard about. I just put one in my system six months ago, and it like totally revitalized the system. It's amazing. Now, the SSD drives are faster. They're silent for the most part, and they're reliable. So the world is moving towards SSD drives. Now, if that's too expensive for you, you can also consider the hybrid drives. And these hybrid or fusion drives are actually large disk drives, HDD drives, but they combine the SSD caching. So it allows you to have faster writes and auto tiering for faster reads. So now that we've covered these main components, let's go over a few things that you can do, a few things to look for in regards to your system and optimizing it. So let's first go up to Apple about this Mac and we will see a few of these components we just talked about. Okay, our processor. All right, this system is four years old, so it's not, you know, spring chicken, but we can see our processor, we can see our memory, 8 gigs, again, not a whole lot. We go to our storage, we can see our makeup on our drive, you see, I have a solid state drive there. And we go to our memory again, we can see 8 gigs of memory. So it's important that you get a baseline and overall understanding of what your system currently has, because if your system is slowing down, you have to decide, hey, basically you have two options in these instances, either you improve your hardware, or you limit or eliminate the offending parties, meaning applications more often than not. So I'd say the first thing, the first best practice you should always keep in mind is updating your system. So often, if I don't get an auto update, I like to go, you know, if I don't get auto notification about, hey, you need to update your system, I will go into the app store and I'd see what needs to be updated and I'd usually just click on update all. Because for the most part, that'll take care of updating for you. And a lot of times, this is like the best first thing you can do, because a lot of times you'll see an instant improvement. Now, if you don't get your application through the App Store, you, uh, you'll have to do an auto update. Uh, a lot of times through the applications, you'll see an option in preferences or whatever is within an application, or you have to manually open up the application and update it. But just remember, keep your applications updated. Keep your operating system updated, because there's important updates, fixes, patches, and whatnot that you should always be looking for because it could fix a lot of problems. It could plug in a lot of holes that you may be having. Now, there's a lot of benchmark test sites and applications you should look at. There's something called Geekbench. I think it's version 3. That's a paid application. You should look into that. There's uh, a website called videocardbenchmark.net. Uh, definitely give that a look. And also the Black Magic Test. This will test out your disk drive. I'm going to get to that later on, but definitely look into that. That's something you can get off the App Store. So it's definitely something that you want to install. At least Geekbench costs money. Videocardbenchmark.net is free and Blackmagic Test is free. And also if you want to upgrade your hardware, if you do the things later on in this video and it doesn't help and you definitely need to upgrade your hardware or buy a new system, but before that try to upgrade the hardware, keep this in mind. All right. When you buy a Mac now, it's not like how it was years ago. By and large, like with the MacBook Pro Airs, you're not going to be able to upgrade like you used to. It used to be you pop open the top, you swap out the memory, and you're done in a few seconds, and away you go. It's not like that anymore. Same thing with drives. 
you could do that. A lot of these components are now soldered into the motherboard, so you can't do these upgrades like you used to. So you have to go into it thinking, I'm going to get the most powerful system I can afford right now. Because let's say you're going to get into video editing and you have a system that's, you know, you get the cheapest system now. You get something that has like 8 gigs of RAM and has an HDD drive in it. Well, you're going to be sorry you did that. Spend the money, get the most powerful system that you can afford now, and you'll thank yourself for it. Now, if you do want to upgrade, there's a great site you can check out. It's called ifixit.com. This site's great. It gives you a ton of advice as far as upgrading components, if you can do it, how you do it in regards to uh, memory, hard drives. It'll talk about devices, everything from an iPhone to a MacBook Pro. So it's called ifixit.com, and I highly recommend you check it out. Now, when we're talking about upgrading hard drives, you have to remember a lot of times hard drives can be upgraded. It's not that difficult. Uh, with older systems, like I swapped out my HDD for an SSD this year. It was very simple. I have a MacBook Pro. But again, it's it was four years old, or it is four years old, and that was pretty easy. Not so with current form factors. It's a little different. So if you're someone who's running a system, you're doing video editing, you might want to try getting an external drive as well. Um, get RAID on it. Um, a lot of times people buy RAID and they don't really know what they're getting. They say RAID and they go, oh, it's going to be fast. But remember, if you get a type 1 RAID, that's just mirroring. So if you want to increase speed performance, you want to get a RAID 0, RAID 5, RAID 10. So it's just something you should think about if you're doing multimedia projects. If you're doing, you know, dealing with audio, video, editing, uh, encoding, 3D graphics, motion graphics, stuff like that, you want to make sure that if you don't have an SSD set up, that you actually have some kind of RAID component. So let's look at software on our system. A lot of times that's what's slowing down everything. The age old question, virus scanning. Should I have antivirus on my Mac? Well, there's a lot of people who believe in it and there's a lot more that don't. As far as real time scanning, I'm kind of of the mindset. I've tried it, I'll take my chances because it definitely taxes the RAM on a system. And I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze, so I go without. If you're someone who feels that you should always have antivirus on any system, then go ahead, be my guest. But to me, it slows down the RAM too much. It's up to your discretion. Uh, as far as applications on your system and deleting these applications from your system or uninstalling these applications from your system, a lot of times you just go to applications, grab it, throw it in the trash, and away you go. But what happens is, with a lot of these applications, there's, there's three ways to install an application on your system. Either you copy it outright into your applications folder, or you go to the App Store. All right, let me say black <laughs> magic tests. So we want to install that. I've already got on there. But you install it from there. And the third way is you get an install file, and you run the installer file, and it puts the necessary components on your system. But what happens is if you install something from the App Store or you install it from an installation file, it puts files throughout your system. And you sometimes don't know where they're at. A lot of times they go in the library folder. So if you come up to Go, you don't see the library folder. And you go, where's that at? You got to hold down the Option key. And you'll see the library folder. And with an application support, often it puts the files within that. Um, I recommend using one of two applications, AppZapper, which is not free, costs a few bucks, that seems to work well, or the free App Cleaner. Now, I will say with App Cleaner, it works great, but sometimes it leaves trailing files, uh, directories on your system. Every once in a while, I've seen that happen. I deleted something yesterday, and it left a file or two within here. So it's one of those things, once you run it, just go back and just make sure that it's not leaving trailing components in there. So I'm trying to think of something I might want to delete from here just to show you. Uh, all right, like for instance, this mini tool recovery. So I'll just open up App Cleaner. And I want to get rid of this mini tool right here. So I delete that. Put in my password, and it will delete it for me. And any files associated, I guess I could have gone with library and see if there's any folders there, but whatever, you get the idea. That's how you run it. It's very simple. Just click and drag it over there and just run it, and it should wipe out all the components on your system. 
or should wipe out all the files associated with that application. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is keeping a lot of files on your system. If you have files scattered throughout your system, I've seen that constantly where, you know, people have dozens and dozens of files on there. Just remember that it's going to have to, your system's going to have to render out all these little thumbnails on there. So it will it can really slow down your system. So take those files, stick them in a folder. If you have a bunch of photos, because people like to stick a lot of photos on their desktop, just stick it in your pictures uh, folder or something like that. And if you don't see these options here on the left on your sidebar, just come up to preferences under your finder and you'll see sidebar. This also goes for your disk. You see, disappears there on the right. So any of these disks that we check off will show up as they're mounted. So sidebar, same thing on the side here. If I take off certain options, you see they're disappearing. So just know that you have control over that from right there. So I recommend if you have, let's say a lot of photos or something like that, stick it in the folder here. You may see an increased speed performance when your system boots up. Okay, another thing I want to talk about is within users and groups, your login items. See, I have a lot of login items here, probably too many. I don't notice that much of a sluggish performance, but if I did, that's the first place I'd go. I'd clean up the drive, the desktop, and I'd also go through here and eliminate a few of these. It's kind of one of those things, it's like trial and error. You eliminate a few, start it up, see if it makes a difference. But it's definitely worth looking into, especially if you have sluggish performance. All right, let's look at Activity Monitor. Okay, you'll find that within Utilities, Activity Monitor. I actually just put that on my dock, the Utilities folder. You can click and drag it. So you would just go... grab this whole folder and just drag it there and let it go. I really think that's um, a good place to keep it because I use this constantly. I use terminal constantly. I use the activity monitor. So I definitely recommend that you keep this in mind and visit the activity monitor often because from here you see, we can see what might be taxing our memory. See, I have no memory pressure right now. I don't have a lot open. Uh, if I hit Option, Command, Escape, you can see I don't have a whole lot open. A whole lot of applications open. I'm not really taxing the CPU much at, at all. Now, you will get your memory taxed a little bit if you, let's say, for instance, you're in a virtualized environment. If you don't know anything about virtualization, know that you've probably heard maybe about like VirtualBox, VMware Fusion, or Parallels for Mac. Basically, what you need to know is that's a type two hypervisor. So on top of your operating system, right now I'm running a Mac, obviously, as you see. Well, I would install VMware Fusion, which is this, oh, I actually closed it out. So this little double arrow here. So basically this is loading up another instance of Mac OS X in a virtualized environment. So you could use your host machine. This is basically a type two hypervisor. You install on your host machine VMware Fusion or Parallels or VirtualBox and run other instances. And what are instances? Instances are another operating systems that are running within VMware Fusion, Parallels or VirtualBox. That's a type two hypervisor. If you ever hear a type one hypervisor, that's basically loading these instances on a bare metal system. So there's no underlying operating system. So again, Type 2, this is the underlying system, this Mac. And then there's VMware Fusion, and then it's these instances are loaded on top of that. So you could see this other instance of Mac is loading up right now. So we can see on here that VMware Fusion is now running. And we can see within this that our memory, it's using up 2 gigs of memory right now and it's leaving the other six gigs for my system. Now it's a fine line because there's applications out there that will allow you to allocate a certain amount of memory to the system or to the application, but it's a fine line between allocating too much memory to that application and not enough for your host or not giving enough to the application and leaving more for the host, too much to the host, more than it's needed for the host and not enough for the application. So it's a fine line there. So if I'm running 
a few instances of operating systems, then it's really going to tax this machine when looking at memory. So let's go and load a few So you can already see where my memory is starting to really get pushed a little bit here. So let's go ahead and fire up another instance. So now you see we're starting to push the limits a little further here. We can see the CPU load starting to push a little further now. So that's where you have to be really mindful how much memory is being used, not only for your instances, but also for your host. So remember, it's the same with uh, Adobe products. Adobe products, a lot of them allow you to allocate a specific amount of RAM. But again, it's just like creating these instances um, through VMware or VirtualBox or Parallels. You want to have enough for the application, but not too much where it takes away from the actual host system. Now let's go ahead and get out of there. Now, when we're talking hard drives, you want to leave at least 10% free on your system. So a lot of times people don't even really know how to check how much hard drive space do I have. Well, you see here, you can highlight the drive. You can actually look through there. I mean, you can actually do a quick test just by looking at it sometimes. If you go to View, Show View Options, see the Show Item Info. So now that'll tell me just by looking at it. That's why I like to keep this checkbox. I like to keep it checked so I can quickly look at it. I can see the items within my folders, but I can, I can also see my hard drive information. To me, that's very handy. That's why I like to keep it. You can also, as we looked at earlier, go to About This Mac, go into Storage. You can see how much hard drive space you have, how much is being used. There's also, you can go into Terminal, type in DF space dash H. That'll also give you a readout of how much hard drive space being used and how much is free. But again, if you're looking at getting a new hard drive, uh, you might want to consider external drive if you're doing video editing before you go out right and get a new internal hard drive. You might want to try that. Get RAID 0, RAID 5, RAID 10 if you're looking for speed and performance because RAID 1 is just for mirroring. It, that has its own use, which is great, but if you're looking for speed performance, you're not going to get it with RAID 1. All right, I want to look at if your system is really sluggish and you've tried these other things. You have enough necessary free space on your system. You don't have a lot of stuff on your desktop. You have a limited amount of items starting up. Open up Disk Utility. Now this is your actual disk and this is your volume. So I like to, first of all, then the volume, repair the permissions. So let's go ahead and try that now. This sometimes can take a while. But often, I've seen many times this will repair any issues you have. Or you see there was many permissions that were repaired, many, many, a lot more than I thought. So after that, I'd normally want to do repair disk. Now you, you see right here, you can't do that. And if you select the actual disk and do it, it doesn't really do it. See, it says it's unavailable. So what you actually have to do is to boot up in recovery mode. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to load up. <laughs> We're going to do it like this. So you hold down the Command R keys. So now you see we have the options now that we have in recovery mode. So what you want to do from here is just go down to Disk Utility. So now you can highlight your drive and you can repair the disk. So some other options if you reboot and this still doesn't work, some other options you can try is you can reset your param. 
That's basically you hold down the command option keys while you hold down the P and R keys. The pram is basically video setting, volume setting, startup disk, things like that. It's one of those things that it's hard to tell if it really works or not, but it really doesn't hurt, so you should just try it. Um, you'll know it's done when you hear the chime twice. So another thing you can try is to boot up in safe modes. So that's much like a uh, Windows safe mode. It's basically just used as an integrity check. So you would hold down your shift key when you reboot. You could try to reboot in verbose mode. That's basically command V you hold down. And that's if you think there's a problem with the drivers or kernel or something like that. And then finally, you can try booting up in single user mode. You hold down the command S keys and that just basically, unlike verbose mode, which boots up into a GUI, graphical user interface, this just boots up to a text prompt. And from there, you could try something like FISC, type in FSCK dash FY. I had to do this the other day and it repaired my system. I tried everything, that's my last resort, and I did that, repaired. So you've, if you've had no luck trying anything else, that's definitely worth trying. All right, so I'm gonna close this out. <laughs> Quit this. Basically, those are the things you should keep in mind before you decide you need to buy components for your system, before you decide that you want a new system. Make sure your software is up to date. Make sure any applications have been uninstalled correctly. Make sure that your desktop is free of clutter. Make sure your startup items aren't too plentiful and slowing down your system. Always have that activity monitor up and you're constantly looking at it. Make sure that you don't have your drive too full. Remember, leave at least, at least bare minimum, 10% free on there. If you have issues on your machine and you tried all the other things, check the disk permissions, repairing if necessary. Remember, you can reset the pram. You can boot up in verbose mode, single user mode, safe mode. And if none of that's helping you and you've allocated the necessary amount of RAM to all the applications, it may be time for an upgrade. Because if you can't go without these applications and your hardware is not cutting it and it costs too much to upgrade the hardware, ah, the components, it may be time to get a new system. And again, if you need to get a new system, make sure you get the most that you can afford, the most powerful system you can afford, because it's not as easy to upgrade now as it used to be in the past. It's not as easy as putting a stick of RAM, uh, just putting a new drive. These newer systems make it a lot more difficult to do that. So I hope I've given you some advice, some useful advice, and I hope you've learned a little bit from this tutorial. I hope to have more for you in the future. Again, this is Jesse for Bit the Brain. Take care.